they made games during the workshops. I want them, I want to also document that so that people feel, mm. see that, you know, what you have done already is legitimate. Hey, what's up, you people? It's Johanna, a.k.a. Jojo. I'm super excited today because we are here with Cite Nkumbe. Cite has been an active member of the African game development community since 2013, beginning with organizing community events in her hometown, Lusaka, in Zambia. She's currently directing a project called Prosearium.net with the goal of documenting 1,000 African women's contribution to game. Hi, City. Welcome. Hey, Georgia. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Thank you. Um, so I'm very happy to, uh, to have you here. Can you please introduce yourself? So my name is Site and I'm originally from Zambia, but I currently live in South Africa. And well, I love games and I have been playing them since I was a kid. So, you know, um, um, and getting into game development community since 2013. And right now, um, actively doing projects that involve um, improving the game development scene, like uh, Proserium.net, which um, with the goal to document a thousand African women in games. And besides that, I'm doing other work, like I'm currently a strategic advisor for Humble Games Black Game Developer Fund. Um, yeah, and I also do freelance research. Yeah. Great, thank you very much. So you do quite a little bit uh, of uh, work for the African community. So can you tell me exactly how you got to get into the video game industry and be an active member of it? All right, so how it started was, I started through, I guess, the tech and business um, scene. That So in Africa, there are lots of uh, tech and business incubators. We usually just call them tech hubs. Like, and I think there was quite a boom and an interest in the early 2010s, like 20, 2012, 2013. There seemed to be a growing interest. And at the time, there was one business incubator in Lusaka called Bongo Hive. And it just seemed like a place because I was interested in all sorts of things. I was interested in robotics. Like I, I just I just finished um my A levels, high school and A levels, and I was waiting to go to university. So I just had so many ideas, you know, young, you're young <laughs> and you're like, oh, I'm, all this stuff is cool. Like I want to make the next whatever, whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> and I also wanted to learn how to code. And then like I just found um someone told me to go to Bongo Hive. And then I went there mm -hmm. and then I went, I was just hanging out and you know, you'd see programmers every day and you know, people coming in with mm -hmm. business ideas and learning how to make their own businesses and there were different communities there there was a community there was a women in tech community there called the Asikana network in fact that's how I learned about Bongo Hive okay. and um I soon after I started hanging around there I got a job there uh, managing their social media for my bosses they encouraged me to just like look explore my interests and the things I was interested in at that time were like um maker stuff and game development like just out of curiosity mm -hmm. because I just learned that there was someone in Zambia who made their own game and I was like wow how can we get more people to do that or or how can um, we learn to do that ourselves um, mm -hmm. so they were like oh, why don't you just host an event and see if people will show up and I was like okay so I made a, an event uh, called Game Dev Weekend and that event was like because um also, I would also be there, like, of course, of course, if there are events there, since I was working for social, for their social media, I would be mm -hmm. present at the events and mm -hmm. documenting them. And oh, the time I was working there, that was like an event which, where the place was so packed, we had to turn people away. Wow. Because um, it, was, it was a small event space. It could only fit like 30 people, but usually mm -hmm. we didn't get that many people for events. So okay. People were excited about it. And I was like, whoa, mm -hmm. like, so people are really interested in this, huh? And it was a two-day mm -hmm. event. Then afterwards, um, uh, or in fact, during the event, you're like, you know what, let's make this into a community and have more events and, you know, explore game development more and see what's out there. So, you know, like as a community, we started looking at what was out there. We discovered that, you know, there are game development tools that are accessible. Um, we discovered global, we found out about global game jam. We found out that people are making games in other parts of Africa, like Kenya and Ghana and South Africa, of course. So that's where, starting with the community from there, that's where my interest, that's that's actually, I guess, what the spark was, because like even then, like 
throughout my life I've loved games and then just to see that it's something which there is a future in this, their careers and I wanted to explore that more so yeah then I went to university and the next year I was studying engineering but then eventually I changed to computer science um, mm. and I'm happy about that because it, it's um, now I have like I'm done with my computer science degree and now I'm looking forward to a future in games and getting more, into more game stuff so that is a full background on, <laughs> on me, a full background on me and how I got into the games in this yeah that's great thank you thank you Siti. um so you said that you you just got your your degree congratulations thank so you. which which space do you think that you would like to occupy in the game industry Oh, so I'm not totally certain, but I know mm -hmm. I don't want to be a developer. <laughs> I, know I, I, I know I don't want to be coding all the time, um, but like the space which I want to occupy is more, um, I guess, something between, I guess, the users and the business stuff, oh, not, not business stuff specifically. I'm still learning, but I know I've looked at, um, I am looking at master's programs and I've looked at a program which where I can specialize in games, user Experience. experience and I was like that's mm -hmm. so that's where I want to go I want to start like going from because I mean I've done a computer science side like I understand how to make games a little mm -hmm. with unity like so I want to mm -hmm. go from like knowing how to make games to knowing how to how to make games better for users and then from that knowing how to help people make good games make games mm -hmm. also I don't I don't know where exactly I'll get in there but I do want to mm -hmm. help people make games that will sell and will tell uh, that users will enjoy and tell the story i don't know where i'll how i'll get where you feel it could okay be, yeah it could be in production it could be in um publishing could be in business development i'm not certain though because mm. sometimes business stuff is a little scary for me but <laughs> <laughs> but but i just know like the the knowledge to help people make things that will that will sell that's that's mm -hmm. that's what i want that's why i want to be able to help people with that so maybe this maybe that's production maybe that falls under production you know? yeah 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 that's great so with this you talk about your in your project and your initiative procearium.net mm -hmm. and so can you tell us a little bit more about it and uh, as well where this initiative will will go where do you see the the goal mm -hmm. in two three mm -hmm. years yeah mm -hmm. So prosarium.net started out, uh, so when I started the communities, like going going back to 2013, when I started the communities, uh, I noticed that when we hosted events, there weren't a lot of women showing up for it. In fact, there were only like, there would be like two women showing up to game development events. And I was like, that's strange because like, first of all, I'm a woman and I'm the one hosting these things. And I have friends who play games and I'm like, I know there are women who play games out there. So I was just like, why aren't women showing up for these things? Like women would show up for the coding events, but then when it comes to game development, they wouldn't show up. So I was like, hmm, what's happening here? Um, so I started in 2015, I started hosting exclusive women exclusive um, um, game development events. And I learned so much from that. I learned, you know, like the people around all around, around me who I would see all the time, though they wouldn't talk about it, they loved games, they love video games. Um, so, and they were interested in learning how to make games. Um, and I think there was even a time when um, the Asakana Network did a survey and asked um, for um, what skills the women in the community would like to learn. And I think the second most popular skill was game development. So I was like, there's an interest, but I think people, but, but like there's, um, but people um, hold themselves back. Like, um, I don't know why I'm still, you see, I'm still learning this like, kind of stuff. Yeah. I like yeah. an awareness or was it, do you think that is a lack of awareness and uh, in terms of what can be done in the gaming industry, perhaps as well, mm -hmm. the attraction that they don't see that uh, that much women yeah. and they don't see that they will be able to fit in yes, as well. Yes. The mm -hmm. parents, the culture mentality as well, mm -hmm. you know, perhaps all of that. Yeah. It, the last two things you said, them feeling that they won't be able to fit in, I think that's a mm. big part of it. Because during the first event I held, um, like someone asked me, like they were like, Sita, how do guys treat you, um, or how do you deal with the way guys treat you when you 
when you when you talk about games and I didn't even mm-hmm. think about it that much before but then after they asked me about it I was like they don't yeah I was like hey you know I actually don't like how they treat me like you know but it's just like became something that I was used to but then mm-hmm. uh, you know that culture like you know um it, like you know how gamer culture is quite aggressive and quite se- sexist and quite like unfriendly to women joining mm-hmm. in gaming culture particularly in Africa as well mm-hmm. like people are still like very broish about it a lot of times mm-hmm. so you know they so a lot of people think like you know in order to get into game development you have to cross that barrier but that's not even mm-hmm. a part of it like you can, you don't even need to be a part of that sphere at all you don't need to be a gamer at all you don't need to be so I think it's it's yeah so it's the awareness of um of of the how they can contribute to games of the type the of game. Yeah. And also mm-hmm. just the association of game development with gamers, I think is also something which puts them off. And before I was like kind of into the game development communities, like like I was doing it more secretly. Like they didn't know that I was actually <laughs> registering a business and all that stuff. Oh, all. okay. Oh, uh, really? Oh, okay. Yeah, like, like they didn't know, how, oh, uh, like they didn't know that, like at the time of Bongo Game Lab, like it was a registered organization. I was doing all that in the dark, uh, because I knew, I knew that I felt like, like if I, if my parents knew that I was like, in like the gaming space, like in terms of like, you know, careers, and like I was looking at that, like in a mm-hmm. career, I thought, like I don't know how they're gonna look at it, like yeah, I, I did, yeah. But it was only until like you know I started doing like bigger things like until the time I went to GDC like and that kind of stuff mm-hmm. that's when I started being more open like oh they're inviting me to talk about th- this um and I told them like oh I'm hosting a game development workshop like that's when like mm-hmm. I got them involved and like there was even a time like when I was hosting a workshop and I was like trying to figure out how to do the catering or whatever mm-hmm. and my mom was like you can do this you can do that so like yeah now they're more open to it, but I I feel like I like per, I personally had the fear of showing of showing my interest that interest to my parents earlier on because mm, mm, um, mm, 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 of the cultural thing like just the African cultural thing of it not seeming like a real career yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah so that is why I think you you was you are talking about prosarium and uh, oh, yeah I yeah <laughs> <laughs> you I, I digress sorry but I think but I think that does answer a question that answered the question of like yeah why how okay it answers one of the questions we'll see but yeah so about prosarium sorry so prosarium the goal of prosarium is to document a thousand African women in games because I feel mm-hmm. like that will help people feel see the see the different sides of the industry the different ways women can contribute to games in Mm africa and specifically african women because the thing is i think just in general um in Mm -hmm. the games industry there is such a lack of african women like even within games themselves like where do you see yourselves in games african women like off the top of my head there's elena from street fighter and she's like a Kenyan, like, you know, like wearing like this tribal stuff. Like, you know, it's just like mm-hmm. such a weird representation of mm-hmm. Africans. And um, but besides that, now there's Orion. So, yes, there's mm-hmm. Erin from Orion, mm-hmm. like, and she, which, which she's cool. You know, besides that, like, you would just get like, you, you don't see yourselves in games as an African woman. Mm-hmm. Um, like, you might see yourself as a black woman, but like, you're very aware, like, you know, I, like, you're very aware that this, this, this black person isn't isn't an mm-hmm. African person or yeah. they, they don't have African ex- the experiences we have in Africa so I want so yeah I want people to just be able to see that you know African women are already contributing to games because maybe mm-hmm. you know maybe like the same the people who showed up at my workshops they made games during the workshops I want them I want to also document that so that people feel mm-hmm. see that you know what you have done already is legitimate you don't have to um you don't have to be a certain way. You don't have to be a certain way to contribute to the games industry. You don't have to, you don't have to try and like, I guess, be like one of the guys or you don't have to, um, you don't have to be a developer or an artist because a lot of people think it's just coding art. That's what they think. Yeah. Like there's just, there's so many aspects of um, game development that you can, you can participate in um, mm-hmm. by just being you. And that's part which I, I, so I keep my interviews casual on the website. And I want, because I want the people to see who the people are, like um, mm-hmm. hear about them. Yeah, and yeah, so that's the basis of it. Like I want people to see uh, how African women can participate in the games industry by just being themselves. Mm-hmm. And um, also, if, what I, my goal is 
to document a thousand African women. And that's where I see, I'm hoping, I feel like I can hit that. In, the goal is to hit that by 2025. Mm -hmm. I, can, I feel like I can definitely do that. And like in the process, like do more things. Like um, I just feel like as the interviews are coming along, you know, things like visibility will be more apparent, you know, may, we'll be able to have more talks. Like um, right now we have a Discord community though. It's not, it's not super active, but I'm fine with that because I'm just going to let it grow organically. I know, I know some communities take a long time to build. So mm -hmm. um, as the interviews get more popular, as we have more events, things mm -hmm. like that, workshops, as we're able to do more things to celebrate um, mm -hmm. and focus specifically on African women in games. Like mm -hmm. when we see that there's a big enough number that we can do things that are specifically for African women games. Like I'll, uh, that's what I, that's what I see in the next three, in the next three years. I want us to be, cause we have things for African women in tech, African women in engineering. Let's have African women in games. Af mm -hmm. Let's have African women in game development. Let's have that. Let's have those kinds of things. Um, mm -hmm. I definitely see like within the next, within the next three years, like I know we'll be able to have that kind of um, community or we'll be able to do those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. Yes, you you were talking earlier about uh, visibility and awareness. So, what are the steps uh, taken to to actually provide this awareness to and an education about the different uh, job opportunity in the game development side of the gaming? For, for the African women that are here and as, that are there actually, and as well in the edu academia space to tell them that there is the game, in, game, game development possibility. So I haven't focused on that too much um, because, you know, this project has only been going on for a year and last year was really tough, as you know. <laughs> But the thing which I do hope to do is um, have um, frequent, this, have people do talks um, and um, like have people give talks who are from different roles in the industry. Mm -hmm. um, but also just the, I think even just the act of interviewing and highlighting people on, on the website who are mm -hmm. from different places. I think that that by itself from different places and different roles in the industry, I think that by itself gives awareness. But I think, you know, once I have like um, once, once I think I've moved toward, moved forward enough with in terms of the number of interviews done and the number of people who are a part of the network um, once I move forward enough with that I would like to um, be able to do things more regularly just like talking and you know being more visible like you know even like your channel right I like I have, I try to look for I I I try by myself I tried by myself to look for like Caribbean game developers and um, seeing I think the, the first video I watched on your channel was someone from the Caribbean Caribbean was, was it from uh, Guadalupe Guadalupe yes yes Guadalupe yeah um, so yeah that was the first video I watched so you know like things like that like just being able to have content out there where people can see. Um, mm -hmm see that there is someone who is doing this and having that content reach other Africans, like African mm -hmm. women in tech, African women who are studying computer science and mm -hmm. African women studying art. So that's what I hope um, mm -hmm. can bring more awareness. Yes, you're right. As I was telling you earlier, uh, off record is uh, next month is uh, the Women History oh, Month. Yes. So, so, so uh, that's giving me a, a great idea because I've already got some content, but I'm not not for the because I've got the Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is African Game Industry Day of Local Just for Black Women in Games in general and uh, Caribbean Game Industry. So I need to find women for all the segments and even more <laughs> because That yesterday I was I was looking at my channel and I was like it's very very male <laughs> oh, yes yeah, me some <laughs> yeah. If you need help finding people, I'll recommend some for you because I would love to, I would love to see people talk on your channel. Yeah, yeah, yeah yes, that, that would be great and give them as well this experience to to express themselves and uh, talk about themselves as well. So, uh, this is great. I will get Rupa on that definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so that's great. So with this in mind, 
what is next to you for you in terms of uh, procerium, but as well in terms of an active member. You you, you said that you were doing, uh, you had different uh, activities. But so, what is next? What what are you going to focus this year, twenty twenty one? Okay, so this year um, I currently have um, like I'm doing part time jobs right now, um, but if I can get I mostly want to relax, honestly. Honestly, I mostly want to relax. I just got my degree. I mostly want to relax. Um, but if I'm able to, like, the thing I want to focus on is research and consultancy in um, the games ecosystem, games industry, games ecosystem, maybe, mm -hmm. I don't know. I have no idea. But, like, mm -hmm. I want to do stuff which is related to that. Um, mm -hmm. And that aside, because while I'm doing things like research and consultancy and finding out about like things which require me to look for information about games and mm -hmm. um, look for game developers, while I'm doing that stuff, I do come across women and I, um, who I can include, like women who I've never heard of and who I can include in, um, you know, the count for a thousand African women in games. So that's what I want to do for the rest of the year. Like I, that's nice. all I want to do. Yeah. Nice. So, so, so viewers... If you, I know that a lot of you always have a question about the the African gaming industry. The so Cite will be, uh, I'm sure, yeah. glad to give you some uh, quote huh? <laughs> for, her, <laughs> yeah. for her research. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, um, is there anything that you would like to add, Cite? Hmm. Well, I wanted to say, like, if you're a viewer and you're watching this. Um, And if you are, if you know someone who would be interested in game development, if you know an, a woman, a woman, an African woman who might be interested in game development or being involved in the games industry, make sure they watch Johanna's channel. Make sure they know about Johanna. Make sure they know about Prozerium. Uh, more stuff is coming on that. And just keep watching. Keep watching. Keep watching Prozerium. Keep watching Johanna. Like, yeah. <laughs> thank you thank you thank you very much let's shine on the whole african gaming industry to yeah. to be able to have a really a, a tight net uh mm -hmm. around the community and ecosystem mm -hmm. asap let's do a growth hack yeah. uh, strategy yes. yeah <laughs> Yeah, this is okay. our year. This is our year. COVID, like uh, working online and stuff. We can do that. We can do it. We can do it. Yes, definitely. Definitely. So thank you very much, Tite, for your participation and for your time today. Um, thank you. Um, it was Johanna Riquier, a.k.a. Jojo. Bye-bye.